Hey folks, thanks for joining us again here today. In today's video, we are going to cover how to repair or rebuild a Flow Mini style valve. All right, we're at a local customer here in Minneapolis with the Flow machine. And you can see here with the cutting head closed, we are getting water backing up the abrasive inlet and coming out of the nozzle, as you can see here, which indicates we have an issue with our needle and seat. All right, so let's jump in and begin uh, our repair or rebuild on this uh, mini valve. Uh, what we're gonna start with is loosening the high pressure connection at the valve body, which in this case consists of a leg of a uh, 90 degree swivel. Once loosened with an open box wrench, go ahead and remove and set aside for now. All right, next we're gonna wanna go ahead and remove the valve body from the down tube. And with this style mini, we're going to want to go ahead and place a wrench on the uh, down tube adapter and go ahead and break that free from the down tube. All right, once that's free, we're going to want to go ahead and remove the air line uh, from the air actuator, which now should allow us to completely take off the air actuator with the valve body portion. All right, we're going to want to go ahead and take that assembly, bring it over to our uh, bench vise, and stick it in the vise, the air actuator portion, and go ahead and use an open-ended box wrench to loosen the valve body from the air actuator. All right, back at the table, we're gonna wanna go ahead and grab our new kit. Uh, depending on what kit you have, you may get a little dowel pin. In this case, uh, we have a plastic uh, dowel, and you're gonna wanna go ahead and uh, use a pick and remove the black O-ring that holds the seat in, Carefully remove the seat. Uh, go ahead and grab that plastic dowel, and we are going to try to press out uh, the seat, the bearing, and the seal. If the components cannot be easily removed with the plastic dowel, we recommend very carefully taking an Allen wrench, which is a little bit more sturdy, and going ahead and uh, gently pushing out uh, the needle with the bushing and the seal. All right, so next let's go ahead and grab our new kit, which is gonna include the seat. Uh, as you can see here, we're gonna get the stem, or what Flo calls the poppet stem. And then next in there, we're also going to have the high pressure seal with the O-ring, the bushing, and the backup ring. All right, let's jump in and start assembling these items on our needle. First, we're going to take the needle, go ahead and put the bushing on with the concave side facing the tip of the needle. Next is the high pressure seal, making sure again that the O-ring is facing the tip of the needle. And then lastly, we're going to go ahead and put on our backup ring, which is uh, symmetrical. All right, we can go ahead and take our needle with our components on it and press those into the top side of the valve body. And again, we can use our plastic dowel to go ahead and push or seat all items inside the valve body. All right, we're back at our uh, bench vise here and we're gonna take out our brush with a little bit of blue goop and apply a liberal amount of blue goop uh, to the threads of the air actuator. All right, next let's grab our water inlet collar and put that on the valve body and then go ahead and begin threading the valve body into the air actuator as seen here. And then go ahead and grab our open-ended box wrench, attach that to the valve body with the air actuator in the vise and go ahead and tighten that up. All right, back at the table, let's grab our air actuator assembly with our valve body and we're gonna go ahead and take out our uh, on-off valve seat, and we're going to apply some blue goop to that seat. Once we've got a good coating of blue goop on each side of the seat, we're going to go ahead and place the seat inside the bottom side of the valve body as seen here, and we're going to take our black O-ring and place that alongside of the seat, uh, using the O-ring to hold that seat in place so as we tip up the uh, air actuator, the seat doesn't uh, fall out the bottom side into the tank. All right, let's grab some more blue goop and our brush, and we're going to apply a liberal amount of blue goop uh, to the bottom side of the valve body threads as seen here. All right, next let's take our 
uh, valve body and air actuator and go ahead and thread in the bottom of the valve body into the down tube collar. And go ahead and hand tighten that as well as you can. It's also a good time to go ahead and reattach the air line. All right, it's at this point we're going to want to go back over to the controller and go ahead and turn the water on, or in other words, turn the cutting head to the on position. We turn the cutting head to the on position because as we go ahead and tighten uh, the valve body down, the one thing we don't want to do is mash the needle into the seat and go ahead and turn that 360 degrees. So by turning the cutting head to the on position, uh, we release any of that pressure that has been placed onto this uh, needle. All right, so let's go ahead and grab our two wrenches. We're going to attach one to the down tube collar, the other one to the valve body. Using the two-hand technique, go ahead and uh, torque to seal. All right, we're almost there. Let's take a little bit of blue goop and apply that to the threads on the swivel. Uh, at least the portion that's going to go ahead and thread into the valve body. And we're going to go ahead and take that and reattach the threads to the inlet collar. Once we've gotten it as far as we can with hand tight, let's go ahead and grab our open-ended wrench and go ahead and tighten uh, the shaft of the swivel uh, as tight as you can or to seal on the valve body. All right, nice work. We are all done. We are going to want to go back to the controller, go ahead and turn the cutting head to the off position. And at this time, you can go ahead and turn on the pump and go ahead and turn back on the cutting head. And let's check our work to make sure we got no leaks. As always, if you have any questions, comments, please feel free to give us a call. 1-833-4HENCO.